The first one that we're going to do is a slivered veggie chop suey. Uh, how many people here like oriental food? Yay, good, all right, good. Yeah, then you're gonna really love this recipe. And what I like about it is it is very, very simple. Um, orig the original recipe had you julienning all these vegetables and of course, you know, who has time for that? So we just take our handy dandy little bag of broccoli slaw, okay? And if you're somebody who's going all organic, in some stores you can now find this organic. So that's a good thing to do. So I'm just gonna empty this bag right into a bowl. I just love it when it's easy. All right. And then we're gonna use roughly a cup or so of very thinly sliced mushrooms. If you're not a mushroom fan, you can go ahead and leave these out. You can use portobellos, you can use uh, moonlight mushrooms if you like. You could even use shiitakes if you're getting uh, ex adventurous and exciting, you know, if you wanna just kinda of mix it up a little bit. And then we're gonna add uh, roughly a little bit more than a cup of slivered snow peas. Does anybody here not know what a snow pea is? Okay, you what? You don't like them, okay. Um, well, you can leave them out then if you like, or you might find that after they've marinated in the, in the ingredients that we're gonna put on this, you might find that you do like them. Um, and that's another thing too about raw cooking. I will tell you, a lot of people think they don't like raw ingredients, but your palate right now, if you're used to eating a lot of things that are prepackaged, that have a lot of preservatives on it, your palate just simply is not used to tasting the raw ingredient and your, your palate will, will change. You will find that eventually you will like these things that you didn't like before. I, there's a lot of things I never thought I would like, and, and it really, it does change. So it's kind of one of those things that you just have to say, okay, I know this is good for me, right? It's the new year, everybody's trying to eat healthy. Say, I know this is good for me, so I'm gonna keep trying it and keep eating it a little bit more until I, my palate does change until I do like it, or find a way to make it so that you do like it. Okay, <clears throat> so we've got those first three ingredients. Now we're gonna add Roughly one cup of, I have alfalfa sprouts here. And you can use bean sprouts, you can use mung bean sprouts, whatever kind you like. And I'm gonna use about a cup, which is maybe just a little bit less than half this package. Okay. If you've never had bean sprouts, they are incredibly good for you. Um, they are awesome on sandwiches. Um, they are awesome in a salad. And they're actually pretty good just by themselves. So. Uh, they're very high in vitamins and minerals. So I'm just gonna kind of break that up there as you can see. And I did not use that whole package, so we're gonna set that aside. And then we're gonna add um, a small red onion sliced, or this is actually part of one because I used the other part for another recipe. Just sliced very thinly, I'm gonna break it up. It's also a very pretty salad. Okay. Again, if you're not that big fan of uh, onions, you could um, use a sweeter onion or maybe use not quite so much. And then to that, we're going to add some fresh cilantro. Now cilantro is something that I was typically more familiar using in Mexican dishes rather than a oriental dish. But it really adds just such a nice earthy flavor that I continue to use it. So what we're going to do is just kind of separate some of the leaves here. And I know some people are not big fans of cilantro. Do we have any of those here? Okay, if you're not a big fan of cilantro, here's another suggestion. Just simply use some flat leaf parsley or some uh, Italian parsley. Those are both fine. Um, fresh herbs are really essential if you decide you want to go into raw foods because you're gonna get so much um, nutrient from them. Uh, you're gonna get a lot of calcium. It's a great way to get calcium without dairy. Uh, some people have real issues with dairy, so uh, fresh herbs are a great way to get dairy. And a lot of these are also very high in antioxidants, um, and they are antiviral and antibacterial. So this time of year when we have a lot of people who are kind of got that little flu thing going around, this is a, an excellent way to boost up your immune system by adding fresh herbs. Okay, we're gonna do just a little bit more here. I try not to get too much of the stem in because I just think that there's enough stemmy stuff in this recipe already. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm gonna discard the stems. And then we're just gonna give this a rough chop. And this is not rocket science. It doesn't have to be chopped or in any perfect way or 
uh, you know, just kind of run the knife through it. And I can already smell that fragrance. I love the smell of cilantro. If you don't like it, maybe you like the smell, I don't know, but I love the smell of cilantro. It just makes me think spring and freshness. Okay, now that's all of our vegetable type ingredients. Now we're gonna go ahead and start adding some of our seasoning. The first we're gonna add is a couple of tablespoons of some fresh minced ginger. Again, I think we talked about this last time I was here. Um, ginger is incredibly good for the immune system. Uh, if you find yourself coming down with a little bit of a cold, take some minced ginger along with some minced garlic and put it in a cup of hot water with some uh, boiling water. And just kind of let it steep for a few minutes and then sip on it. Uh, my parents didn't believe this either. I, I see when somebody giving me a look like, oh, really, do you think so? My, my parents didn't believe me either. And the, my parents were visiting me this holiday and my mom started to get sick and I gave her some of this. And within an hour, she said, I feel so much better. Okay, so, so that, that right there proves it for me. All right, to that, we are gonna add um, three to four tables of sesame oil. Three to four tablespoons of sesame oil. And then actually I've got a little bit more um, ingredient here. I think I just kind of overdid it with my veggies. So I'm gonna probably add a little bit more than that because I like lots of sesame oil. Sesame oil is also really good to cook with. If you've not used it before, it gives a nice, really kind of earthy, nutty flavor. Okay, that's good. Then we're gonna add three tablespoons of tamari. If you're not familiar with what tamari is, the best way to describe it is it's a more natural form of soy sauce, okay? It doesn't have artificial preservatives in it. Some soy sauces that you buy in the market might have um, artificial colors in them. Uh, some of them are made with other ingredients other than soy, like corn products. So if you're sensitive to corn products, you may want, not want to go with this. So this is a gluten-free uh, option here. Again, if you are, are gluten intolerant, you're not going to want to go with the regular soy sauce that may bother you. So we're going to add a few tablespoons of this. No, no, no specific reason. You could probably do it that way if you prefer, if you prefer to. Um, this is just the way I've always done it because uh, I do a lot of cooking classes, so it's easier for me to, to talk about and show people each ingredient at one at a time because a lot of people are not familiar with a lot of these things. So, and then we're gonna add a couple of tablespoons of, of white rice vinegar. If you don't happen to have white rice vinegar, you can also use some cider vinegar. I've used that before. Or maybe a little bit of uh, white wine vinegar. Uh, probably I would prefer the cider vinegar over the white wine vinegar better. But it's a good option if you just don't happen to have that in the house. Because again, one of the things I try to teach people about raw cooking is it's not 100%. You know, it's not an all or nothing thing. If you think, oh, I can't do this because I don't have all the ingredients, you know, do what you can. And, and, then, and that's fine. Do the best you can. All right, and then we're gonna add a couple of tablespoons of sesame seeds. And sesame seeds are really important in this, uh, in this recipe because uh, it's gonna add a little bit of protein, but not only that, but very high in calcium. Sesame seeds are a calcium powerhouse. So if you are somebody, especially us women, you know, they're all, always telling us to be concerned about our calcium with osteoporosis and things like that. This is an excellent way to get your calcium. A uh, quarter cup actually of sesame seeds has something like almost 400 milligrams of calcium. Just a quarter cup. So it doesn't take much. They're, like I said, they're a powerhouse. Okay, that's all of our ingredients in this recipe. And then I'm going to simply just take some tongs, you could use a big spoon, and just mix it around. The nori I did not add. Thank you for asking. It is uh, like a seaweed paper, so it's often something that sushi is made out of. It's, sushi might be rolled in nori. Uh, I do also have a recipe for raw vegan sushi that has no fish in it um, that uh, I use the, the nori for. And I actually like it. It's, it. To me, it's a very mild form of seaweed. Um, but then again, for somebody who's not had seaweed, that's one of those things that they say, oh, is it possible for that to be mild? Well. You know, again, it's one of those things that you try and you taste and you just, you wait until your palate gets used to it. You keep trying it until you figure out ways that, that you like it. So you could certainly add that here. 
that would add um, some additional calcium that would also add some additional vitamin A. Seaweed products are very high in vitamin A and calcium. Doesn't that look pretty? I mean, I just, I just, it just looks inviting and it looks very summery and fresh. So I wanna make sure I get all that ginger mixed up real well in there. This is one of my favorite dishes because it is very light. And of course, after eating a lot of heavy foods at the holidays, this is gonna really be nice and flavorful. Let me just taste it. I think it's perfect. Maybe just a smidge more tamari. And that's it. Took me all of about, what, 10 minutes, maybe 15, because I was talking. So. Raw foods does not have to be complicated. It does not have to take a lot of steps. It can be really simple and easy. It is a, a, it's gonna be relatively high in sodium because it is a soy sauce, yes. Uh, yeah, but you don't really have to use a whole lot of it. So, you know, and if you, you weren't, if you're sensitive to sodium, you could use a little bit less, use a little bit more sesame oil if you wanted to. Um, but you're gonna wanna use at least a little bit of it because otherwise you're not gonna get that chop suey-like flavor, yeah. Um, but I tend to be sensitive to sodium and the tamari does not bother me the same way real soy sauce does. So you know, when you go with a more natural product, you're gonna probably find that, that the same will be for you, okay? And I was so pleased to see that Food City carries tamari now, because for a while they didn't, and I used to have to go to my local health food store to get it. So that just thrills me to death. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna set this one aside.